So this first demonstration as part of the Iron Eagle is the 2D to 3D and then back to 2D. So we're actually not going to be inside of the assembly when we do this part of the demonstration because we're going to be showing opening an AutoCAD file into Solid Edge. So you want to just go to the file open and you want to go to the 2D to 3D to 2D folder and in there you'll find an AutoCAD drawing. So switch to AutoCAD DWG and you'll notice that there's two different AutoCAD drawings depending on which one you want to use. Uh, if you're using first angle projection then you would use this of course under bar first DWG file. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, the AutoCAD under bar hub DWG and you want to go to your options to show the AutoCAD uh, import wizard and so here you want to make sure that you're pointing to the right INI file in this case we're not so you got to go to browse and you want to make sure you point to this one SEA CAD INI file if you don't see this file that means you didn't run the files to copy uh, from the uh, demo setup once you click on that you can go to the preview this will show you uh, the layers for this particular uh, drawing if you want to show you can turn those layers on and off you may want to zoom in to a particular uh, area of the uh, of the model here you can see uh, that we also support the the black and white background and I would leave that set to white then go to the next uh, page and you'll notice that it's pointing to a metric under bar DFT file this is actually another file that is copied during the setup uh, to the template folder and the only reason that really this file is here is because uh, if you're running your demo at 1024 768 which is what uh, most of projectors uh, require uh, at least the older ones um, this will uh, has the the template zoomed into a 1024 so when you bring it in the uh, draft file is not very small down in the corner and just go to the next sheet don't need to make any changes here go to the next sheet here you can show that if you want to change one of these um, I have the dot map to dash dot you can change that back to dot on the next one you will need to make a change to the red uh, solid edge line width make that 0.35 and you don't need to make any changes to the rest of these and then go ahead and click finish and open and it will open it in that template and you see that it fits full screen and that's the only reason that I use that uh, that saved draft template so here um, I'm showing it in in uh, again third angle projection if it's in first then these two views will be swapped um, and I'll explain what you need to do differently uh, when we get to create 3D so the first thing that you may want to show is that we can add some dimensions to this that it is a real uh, a real draft file you can show I'm using a smart dimension if you hold the shift key you can get the distance between if you hit the A key you get your angle dimension you can add a few more dimensions if you like uh, the next thing though that you really want to show is uh, that you can turn off particular layers it's very important that you turn off the center line layer or you're gonna have trouble lining up the views when you get to create 3D but you also want to turn off the border and the text so you just select those three and click hide layer the next thing then you're going to do is run the create 3d you're going to take this 2d drawing that came from AutoCAD and we're going to create a 3d model from it and we're going to take along the dimensions with it which is a very powerful thing so go to tools create 3d and uh, depending on uh, which uh, which uh, template you used whether it's first angle or third angle uh, you need to set, select the opposite to get the views to line up correctly so if you've used the first angle template then you're going to need this set to third I use the third angle template so I need to set this to first and that's basically determines uh, how these views are going to align to each other when you get to create 3D uh, because uh, it always takes the the uh, the view and if it's third angle it folds it from the top well I want this view on the bottom so I've got to change it to a first angle if you've used first the opposite is true 
So just uh, as a rule, remember that. So uh, again, I've used third angle, so I'm going to use the first projection angle. I want it to take along these dimensions. If these are grayed out, it's because you have the wrong template selected. You have to have a sync metric part template. If it's set to uh, traditional, you will not be able to take the dimensions along. So first thing I want to do is fence select the right side view here. Then I'm going to click new view. I'm going to fence stretch select uh, this side. I'm going to go to the fold line. I'm going to pick up this center point and this quadrant point as my fold line and click finish. This should align the views like this. If this uh, front view is up here on the top, then you've selected the wrong uh, the wrong projection angle, whether it's first or third. So, next thing we want to do then is we actually want to start creating a 3D model from this 2D. So it's very very easy to use the regions that we've uh, that we've defined here. So you just pick up the inside one first. You want to drag it up. You want to make sure that you're set on endpoint selection. You want to pick up this endpoint. And the thing you're going to point out is you notice that that brown dimension, which was detached, automatically attached to the 3D geometry. Do the same thing here. Pull this up. Snap it to that endpoint. For this final one, uh, because the the view is a little bit skewed. Um, might be a little bit confusing so what I like to do is actually pull this one up very high first and then come down and click into this so that it pops down where it's supposed to be. Uh, if you start dragging this up and click there it looks like it just jumps down for no reason. It's a little more obvious uh, what it's doing there um, that you're lined up with the view. Now you notice there's a round on here uh, so we're gonna go ahead and add the round and it's a three millimeter round Okay, and at this point then you can just go ahead and turn off the the sketches. And so now you can see that all of those dimensions have reattached to the 3D model. And at this point you can select a dimension. Make sure you select tool. Select the dimension. You want to push the top. And you want to scroll this uh, so that you can scroll it and then type in 30. Hit the tab key, don't hit enter, hit tab so you stay in the edit here. And you want to lock that dimension. Then you want to show that you can select this top and you can drag and it will honor that 30 millimeter dimension. And it doesn't matter which uh, side you push or pull, it's always going to honor that 30 millimeter dimension. Next thing you may want to show is. Uh, direction control. So if I pick this 13 millimeter, if I start scrolling, you can see it's moving the bottom. If you flip the arrow, we can start moving the top. And you want to set this to 15. Then you'll come over to this dimension, make sure the arrow is pointing up to the top here. And you want to bring this down to 50. Next thing you want to show is that you also have uh, just uh, control to drag this around at will. You want to grab this hole, pick the small plane, and quickly move your mouse outside of the edge of the circle. Let me redo that. Um, because if you go slow, you'll end up start picking up key points uh, on the geometry, and it will lock up. And, and so you want to pull out very fast so that you can show that you can drag this around and that live rules are controlling uh, the symmetry. But really, you want to move out at a 45 degree angle. So the easiest way to do that is just hit the escape key one time. And what I like to do then is hold the shift key and click the orange ball at the end of the arrow. Once you click that ball, you can let go of the shift key and you want to pick up the center point of any of these circles, doesn't matter. And that way it's pointing right to the center, which is on a 45 degree vector then that you can just simply click that arrow and start dragging. And I like to move this out to 12. 12 more millimeters. Okay. Next thing is grab the 40 millimeter dimension, start scrolling that, get that to 48, would be fine. Uh, these dimensions aren't super important because um, this part is not actually going to be used in the Iron Eagle. It is the hub that's in the Iron Eagle, but this particular one we're not putting in there. 
move this dimension around where you can see it a little bit better. You want to go ahead and lock that dimension and go ahead and lock the 63 millimeter dimension. And now what we want to do is create a formula. So up, grab the leader up here. Don't grab the text. It'll try and edit the text. Grab the leader, right click, and go to edit formula, and you simply select the 63 millimeter dimension minus 20 and right click. Okay, so that adds that formula in there so that now if I modify the 63 uh, millimeter dimension, once that edit control comes up, you start dragging, you can see that it's modifying the other dimension, keeping it always 20 millimeters less. And it does again, doesn't really matter where you where you stop. Uh, you just right click and accept it and uh, and you'll see that then you'll have your uh, finished model. So at this point you're done with this uh, changes to the hub so you want to go ahead and save this and you want to make sure that you call it hub. doesn't matter if you put a capital H or a small h uh, you, but you definitely want to call it hub because this is uh, the file that will get deleted by the reset. If you want to name it something else that's fine but on your demo reset bat file you'll need to go in and and have it uh, look for the particular file name that you're using to delete. So we call it hub, save it. And now we want to show how we can create a drawing with this. So you just want to come up here and go to new create drawing and you want to point to the quick sheets. So remember I told you that uh, it's gonna we copied some quick sheets in there with the demo uh, setup. So you see that we have hub underbar quick sheet which is the third angle and we have hub underbar quick sheet first which is the first angle projection um, quick sheet. Before you open it you want to turn off the run creation wizard and go ahead and click OK. You can see it lays those out very quickly. You may want to show how you can manipulate these uh, dimensions very easily. This was using a retrieve dimension, so it automatically retrieved the dimensions from the 3D model. You may also want to show some dimensioning. Again, smart dimension, I like to show that you can pick different types of elements and it puts the appropriate dimension on there. If you click a line, you get a linear. If you click two lines, you get a distance between. If you click two points, again, get a distance between. If you hold a shift, you get the minimum distance. If you click an A, you get the angle. Um, AutoCAD people like to like to see that uh, easy dimensioning. What I would do to finish this off then is uh, create an isometric view um, showing how you can create principal views dragging in the different directions if you go off on an angle. And before you actually place that view, I like to go in and change it to a shaded visible edges. Just go ahead and click it and then move it down onto the, the uh, draft sheet to show that you can get that nice shaded uh, isometric view. And at this point you're done with the 2D to 3D. Uh, you can save this draft sheet if you want. It will get deleted. Um, but you don't. it's not necessary. You just want to close all of these files and this will get you back to the Iron Eagle and you're ready to start the next part of the demonstration.